What's up, people? Tonight, I wanted to come to you with an episode regarding Corpus Delecti. The reason why I'm coming to you with that portion of it is because without Corpus Delecti, there is no case. And basically what that is, is the facts and circumstances constituting a breach in law or a breach of a law. And that comes down to one of the things we talked about, um, totality of circumstances. I brought it up and I actually did a video on that because that also goes into things such as reasonable suspicion. But the thing with corpus delecti is the fact that there can be no conviction without a crime. And corpus delecti is the setup or the totality of the elements of a crime. And the reason I chose that today is because one, we're getting ready to start going into the courtroom, setting up document, setting up um, defense, setting up contract, you know, breaches and things of that nature. And we're going to start hearing more Latin. And a lot of people say Latin is a dead language. If you are going to court, that is what moves the court. Latin moves the court. So I'm bringing it up because even when you're reading through statutes and codes, corpus delecti in the most elementary of breakdowns simply comes out to intent. Now, when you are reading through these code statutes and ordinances, one of the elements in that, for most of them, is intent. And that's where we're going to go into another, another section of it. I'm going to briefly go over it, but again, when you're talking about why we are in a legal system that is about money versus going to offer a fair trial where it goes into either guilt or innocence and even innocence is not an option it's not guilty but it goes to the point of why and it goes back to corpus delecti because the most difficult part of a case in any accusation is to prove intent and you have to pretty much be able to read someone's mind that's when they go into um, things that you'll hear from me say later like habitual testimony which is basically whenever they use something that you've done many times or something that somebody else has done many times for them or against them we're also going to go into the fact that the reason they don't want to offer a fair trial is because they are putting up baseball averages, which is meaning out of a hundred cases or a hundred trials, they may only win 27, 30. So that means they will have a 300 batting average. But now, why does this favor? someone that actually goes to trial because it is difficult to prove intent and the favor is in the fact of the defense because or the accuser I'm going to go into those words later as well but the accuser has a 70% chance of being acquitted why because intent is difficult to prove now again this episode is about corpus delecti and simply being a criminal charge should not be supported unless corpus delecti is established and again that means the elements of a crime and we know from sure v cullen a crime must exist there must be an injured party and if there is no injured party there is no crime because we know a crime is damage to person property or the witnessing of a felony 
and generally the felony itself is damage to personal property and <clears throat> all facts relating to the commission of a particular crime and of the fact that the crime was committed by some human agent so again there has to be something done to somebody by somebody and the elements of a crime is the occurrence of loss or injury damage to person damage to property the criminal causation of that loss or injury that would be the intent because just like I spoke about in the criminal damage act when a police officer swipes at your camera or and tries to knock something from your hand throws you down rips something of your garments or anything that is criminal causation because their intent was to damage their intent was to injure again those are crimes damage to person damage to property and the identity of the defendant as the perpetrator of the crime now generally they will have the causation or excuse me the occurrence of a loss they'll also have the identity of a person not necessarily the person that's being accused but the most difficult part is the causation of that loss which is why video is so important nowadays and I'm gonna say a couple things and then I'm gonna give you a case because in criminal law all elements of the offense must be proven and the burden of proof is on the prosecution to prove each element of the offense in order for the defendant to be found guilty and again we're going to talk about defendant and prosecutor because again those words are not for criminal intent but again that's for a later discussion because words that you will hear is actus reus means guilty conduct that will mean a person's actions to prove intent mens rea which is the actual meaning of intent is guilty or uh, guilty mental state which is why a lot of people whenever it comes to proving mens rea you have people that say oh there was a psychological break or there's some type of mental health issue where if there is no mens rea there can be no intent so therefore there can be no responsibility they are taking away one's liability because of their mens rea and attendant circumstances which again is simply totality of circumstances which is the entire bouquet together in all of his actions and now when we talk about the penal code I use the model penal code section 1.13 paragraph 9 and a includes the description of the forbidden conduct and the definition of the offense which again is not really deep because it's the whole purpose of what are you there for what was the cause the establishment the required kind of culpability again who did it negates any excuse or justification of such conduct now that one is one of those where it gets kind of tricky because you can't get that from a uh, motor vehicle um, infraction. Does not come from that. It has to be something in which Florida has what they call a stand your ground law. Now, understanding you're allowed to protect your person as well as your property. That was the intent of the stand your ground law. It's been kind of circumvented because there are things that allow for a more broad look because most statutes codes and ordinance 
or void for vagueness. That is also something I'll deal with shortly. Negates a defense under the statute of limitation. Now that also is one of those where we spoke about in wrongful death. Each episode has a time frame in which you can cause or begin an action. And it's generally one of those where I would recommend doing immediately. Such as wrongful death, file it, get it started. And establishes jurisdiction or venue. Jurisdiction is one that is willfully getting and placed on the record. Understanding each court has a set of guidelines for what they can adjudicate. You also have to agree to that adjudication by them. Whether you are the defendant or you are the accuser, there has to be a venue in which justice is to be decided upon. And that's what's done all through corpus delecti. And the case that I'm going to bring up is Powell v. Texas 392 U.S. 514-533-1968. Criminal penalties may be inflicted only if the accused has committed some act, has engaged in some behavior which society has an interest in preventing. Now, when you hear that, that itself sounds a little vague because you understand a police officer takes his oath as an executive officer or under the executive branch of the Constitution. Part of that oath is assigned a particular trust because we understand the Constitution to be a trust document of the people. When you take a oath to become a part of that trust, it is to work for the betterment of the entire whole. We have the supreme law of the land, which itself is the Constitution, and Supreme Court cases that have been decided upon based on the constitutional guidelines that were set out as the restrictions to government. Now, when an officer accepts his oath or her oath, they become a trust of the people. So which means they have to be amenable to the people at all times. Why? Because they are the public servant to the people. Now, I'm going to get deeper into that as we go along. But again, these are little things that we have to put out in order to understand where it is that I'm going with a lot of these videos, where it is and how they belong together and how they tie together when it is that you are representing your own interests when you're standing before a judge. Understanding what these documents are for, understanding the why of what we're doing is the main issue that should be focused upon. And at this point is understanding Latin is not dead. Corpus delecti is the most essential point of law. And if there is no corpus delecti, there can be no adjudication. There can be no sanction. There can be no penalties. And understanding as we learn this, we not only learn our protections, but we learn the process of those that are supposed to protect us. So keeping that in mind, understanding intent is what needed for them to convict you of any crime, which is damage to person or property or the commission of a felony. If none of those are present, understand what they are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to do and when they don't do it properly send them on their way because once they violate they are no longer actors of the government they are regular people so you hold them against in federal court liable because they have violated their trust they have violated their oath they have breached their duty 
and until next time.